If you're one of the 3.6 billion passengers expected to travel by air this year, you may have heard one of your pilots making an announcement like this one. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We've just begun our descent into Sydney. If you'd like to set your watches, the current time in Sydney is approximately 11.30 a.m. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful clear afternoon in Sydney today. It's currently 26 degrees and there's a light northeasterly breeze. We'll be arriving from the north, so you'll get a spectacular view of Sydney Harbour out the left side of the aircraft. We anticipate arriving at the gate in about 25 minutes time, right on schedule. I'd like to thank you for choosing to fly with us today and hope you can join us again in the future. It sure was nice of them to find out that weather info for us, but what's it really for? Where do they get this information from? And why is it important that the pilots know what the temperature is or which way we'll be arriving from? Accurate and up-to-date weather information is important for pilots, air traffic controllers, and dispatchers for two primary reasons, safety and economy. Your pilots must ensure that conditions are safe for flying. The air traffic controllers assist in navigating traffic around potentially hazardous weather, and the dispatcher who planned your flight used wind data to plan the route, decide how much fuel to load, and how high you should fly. These are some of the most significant conditions that could affect your flight depending on where you're flying to and from, of course. You're unlikely to run into a blizzard landing in Dubai, and volcanic ash isn't a concern departing Heathrow. There are limitless different manifestations and combinations of these weather elements. Due to the complex nature of weather systems, ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, developed a standardized format in January 1968 so that weather conditions could be concisely communicated and understood worldwide. This format is called METAR, the Meteorological Terminal Aviation Routine Weather Report. You can see why an acronym is required. They're usually issued every hour from stations around the globe, primarily at airports. In 1996, the METAR format was updated to its current form as laid out in the World Meteorological Organization's Aerodrome Reports and Forecasts. METARs are based on surface weather observations, which can be recorded manually by an observer, by computer through the use of automated weather stations, or in a hybrid scheme using weather observers to augment the otherwise automated weather station. Here's an example of a METAR string from Sydney Airport. If you've never seen a METAR report before, this probably looks like a bunch of jumbled nonsense. Let's break it down to see what kind of conditions each element represents. Yankee Sierra Sierra Yankee is the station identifier for the airport which the METAR applies to, in this case, Sydney Airport. The next section gives us information about when this METAR was published. The 24 tells us which day of the month it was published, in this case the 24th of October, and 0700 Zulu is a timestamp in coordinated universal time. In aviation, Zulu time is the universal standard, the Z standing for zero hours, the time zone designator for UTC. The next section tells us the wind on the ground at Sydney Airport. In this case the wind is blowing at 10 knots from 150 degrees of azimuth. There are also wind gusts of up to 15 knots. 8SM indicates a visibility of 8 statute miles. TSRA stands for thunderstorms and rain, and the minus modifier denotes that the rain is light. The next two parts denote the two observable cloud layers. The first layer is a scattered layer, with bases at 10,000 feet above ground level. The CB suffix indicates that it's a cumulonimbus, or thunderstorm cloud. The second layer is an overcast layer, at 25,000 feet. 18 and 6 refer to the temperature and dew point respectively, and Q1016 is the atmospheric pressure adjusted to sea level, in this case 1016 millibars. Sometimes instead of detailed visibility and cloud cover information, CAV-OK -okay is substituted. CAV-OK -okay stands for ceiling and visibility OK, and can be used in place of a more specific visibility and cloud briefing. There are a few specific parameters that must be met for CAV-OK -okay to be used, but broadly it indicates good visibility and no precipitation. As visibility becomes poorer, runway visual range can also be added. RVR is the distance over which a pilot of an aircraft on the center line of the runway can see the runway surface markings. This can affect takeoff and landing procedures and dictate whether departures and arrivals are safe or legal at all. Some METAR reports from military installations also contain a color state Color states can be used as shorthand for cloud height and visibility, and are useful for gaining an at-a-glance idea of the conditions at an airport. METARs can also contain remarks or other comments to provide additional information. 
This remarks section gives us a bunch of extra information about the storm that's currently moving over the airport, such as when the rain and storm began and how they're moving, where lightning is occurring, and how much rain has been recorded over the course of the day. Of course, there are many more details that can be included for virtually any type of weather phenomenon. In fact, the remarks section can include any text. Got hail? No problem. Tornado? Done. Volcanic ash? British Airways says be careful, but it's in there. If you need to describe weather conditions from simple sunny days to complex storm systems, Meta can accommodate all your meteorological measuring machinations. In conjunction with Meta reports, pilots also use ATIS for important updates. The Automatic Terminal Information Service is a continuous broadcast of non-control information. Like Meta, the ATIS is usually updated every hour, or where there's a significant change to weather at the airport. ATIS messages are usually broadcast using an automated voice to save time. Let's listen to an example from Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport. This is Schiphol arrival information kilo, main landing runway 18 right, transition level 5, 0, 2, 0, 0 degrees, 1, 1 knots, visibility 1, 0 kilometers, view 1,300 feet, scattered 1,800 feet, broken 2,200 feet. Temperature 15, dew point 13, QNH 9095, Hecto Pascal, no significant change, contact approach and arrival call sign only. End of information, Kilo. You may have noticed that much of this ATIS broadcast is very similar to the information that's contained in the Meta, but there are a few important additions here. The ATIS tells pilots which runway to expect to land on, what the transition level is, and an instruction as to how to contact approach and arrival controllers in this case, by checking in with their call sign only. Where multiple runways are being used for landing and departing at larger airports, the ATIS message may list them or provide only the main runway. In either case, controllers will provide crews with an expected arrival runway on first contact. Level 4-5, expedite out of 6, and step for the 1-8, right, KLM 3 for goal. You might be wondering what this kilo refers to. ATIS broadcasts are assigned a phonetic identifier, starting with alpha. For each time the broadcast is changed, the identifier will increment through Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and so on. Some ATIS messages instruct pilots to advise controller on initial contact you have Sierra. This is to ensure that pilots have listened to and understood the most current ATIS message. Many airports also employ the use of digital ATIS, or DATIS. DATIS is a text-based, digitally transmitted version of the ATIS audio broadcast. It's accessed via a data link service such as the ACARS, EFB, or through the CDU. DATIS may be incorporated into the core ATIS system or be realized as a separate system with a data interface between voice ATIS and DATIS. DATIS was commissioned in April 1993 by the FAA and was implemented in two phases. The first phase introduced a digital text version of the ATIS via data link, and the second phase replaced manually recorded ATIS radio messages with an automated voice. The primary drivers of the development and implementation of this new technology were increases in efficiency, reducing workloads, and clearer communication. At the time, only the busiest 30 airports in the US were put forward as candidates for the new technology. Now, due to its success, DATIS is used across America and the world. Aviation as an industry relies on meteorological measurements, as well as the dissemination of those measurements to professionals in the air and on the ground. Next time you're flying, you can check out the Meta for your local airport yourself online. Cav okay and you're in for a smooth takeoff. Something like this, well, Make sure your seatbelt is fastened low and tight across your lap. <laughs>